Welcome back to Exceptional Talk with Dr. Clark. I have a guest, guys, you do not want to miss. This is Mr., shall I say, Coach Fernando Daniel. He's a father, a husband of three. He has two daughters and a son. He's from Atlanta, graduated from Grady High School, which is now known as Midtown High School. He played professional basketball overseas for seven years. He is a teacher and coach for 10 years, worked also for the Department of Juvenile Justice, has three college degrees, and two of them which are masters. And he has been married for 10 years. So ladies, he's a married man. All right. Welcome, Coach Daniel. How are you? Hey, I'm doing good. Pleasure to be on your podcast. Pleasure to be on your podcast. Well, it's a pleasure to have you. I know that uh, you and I have had an extensive conversation, and I just felt that it was necessary to share with my audience. So um, before I get into asking any more questions, I, I know that I've had a little synopsis about you, but are there anything that you think you would like to talk about about yourself uh, before we get started? Uh, I think that bio was actually good enough. <laughs> all right. Uh, all right. Well, we're going to go ahead and rock and roll then. All right. So uh, guys, you are about to hear Coach Daniel, the mind of this man when it comes to infidelity. I'm going to say that one more time. Infidelity. Mm. All right. So, um, Coach Daniel, I know that you and I had a conversation about, you know, uh, cheaters. And you share some things with, with me and a couple of other ladies that was so uh, important, but let me go ahead and uh, do this disclaimer before we get started now. He is not <laughs> saying, let me say it again, he is not stating that every man cheats. There are some outliers. So he's basically Absolutely. saying Absolutely. that there are some men that are that that wants to be faithful, that are faithful, but then there are those that mm, all right, you got mm. it. <laughs> interesting. Uh, that, I, I think you put it in, in a very interesting way. Uh, and, and and of course, when we all are in a room together, uh, it'll make sense to a lot of women. But my biggest, my biggest, uh, not concern, but I will say my biggest um, highlighted issue will be that usually uh, women, they get their advice from women. Uh, and men get their advice from men, which I which I really think is is kind of backwards. Uh, so now let's get let's t let's talk about the the, the topic at hand. Uh, when I say that men, uh, most men, and when we say most men, of course I don't want to say all. Most men that are seasoned, uh, and when I say seasoned, they have a relationship experience, uh, and usually these are the guys that are thirty plus. You know, and they got relationship experience. Um, ladies, you need to really listen to this and take heed. When you first meet that guy, there's three phases that he will be in. He's going to be in one of those phases every time. He's either uh, he's either what we consider a dog, what you guys consider a dog. That means he's either actively a cheater or he's never been a cheater but will be one soon. Or the scary part is he hasn't been one. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, and I think the, the most part is when a woman meets a guy, what stage is he in? Is he a cheater actively right now? Has he been a cheater? Or is he going to be a cheater? And I, and I, and just from my experience, and I used to be a part of a, a hundred black men uh, and of course, we would we would just sit and talk. And so my my mind and my thought it doesn't come from just my personal opinion. It kind of comes from the opinion of 
many other males that I've been able to see. So right. when we talk, okay, we we got some statistics here. <laughs> <laughs> not just not yeah. just your opinion. We got some yeah. statistics that can back yeah. up some of this. Okay, exactly. Uh, so and then of course there are you know we have those 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 guys that defy the odds. And now it goes deeper because there's reasons that guys defy the odds. Uh, and that's because uh, a lot of times they they have been taught and trained to fight the urge. Uh, and some of them don't even have the urge because they just they just been around uh, maybe a family, a father figure or uh, someone that actually taught them to fight the urge early on in their life. Usually that's that's when those odds are, are, are defeated. Now, I will also carry on and say this, is that um, men and women, society norms have taught us something different. And here's why men are actively hunters like they are. Um, when women are getting uh, groomed and when women are being raised to, to be a lady and, and find the right husband, usually they're taught to go one male at a time. Uh, they're not allowed to venture off. Uh, they try to save their virginity. Um, and they are, they are honing in and taught the discipline to actually commit to one guy. And guess who supports that? Their peers. So it becomes second nature. So when a woman becomes an adult, if she finds a man that's weak for flesh or she finds a man that doesn't match her mindset, she immediately, she immediately shuns him. She immediately uh, judges or she immediately looks at him like something's wrong with him. But nobody ever said, hey, why is it so many men are cheating? Why is it so many men are, are broken that, by I, I, I asked that question, but um, I actually have asked that question, are all men cheating? <laughs> and I was told that they were, but I don't believe that. So I like, <laughs> like you said, there are some outliers. So I'm, I'm yeah. going to stick to that. You know, I'm going to be objective because yeah. I don't want anybody to say that I am, uh, <laughs> you know, projecting my personal feeling because I've just recently, scored, you know, scoring woman. Scoring, you know, I'm feeling some kind of way. So I want to down a man. I know. I, I know for a fact there are good men, you know. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and you know what's crazy? What's crazy is a lot of times, a lot of times the cheating guys, they honestly are good men. They they just fall victim to temptation. And if anybody has has deep spirituality, they'll understand that that is literally uh, almost remotely the easiest thing to, to happen to you, to fall for temptation. Mm -hmm. And the well, flesh... You, you see how many men there are to women are to men. So, you know, Absolutely. men, men have, have a little more opportunity for choices and to take take the pick of the litter however they want it. I had I, I spoke to a gentleman, he said that what he does in his dating, he date these women and he narrowed them down to three women and then he turned around and he date those three women to see which one of the of the woman yes. the the, uh, the one that gets the prize, shall I say. Absolutely 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 but but it goes back to also uh when when males, when we are when we are raised up in our teen years, everybody teaches us naturally to hunt for women. They teach right. it naturally to us. Right. Your your male your male friends they high five you they they give you kudos and you you look like big man on campus when right. you have multiple women. Multiple women, women yeah. You get to the so, belt. Exactly. So so society and especially women. Ask yourself, who, who really is a victim here? And it's not necessarily saying this. Now, once as a man, you realize, hey, I've been taught something. How do I break that curse? And that's the part that becomes very, very difficult. Some men just fall victim of it, and they know that they have a problem. But they know, hey, because they naturally feel like, hey, I'm, I'm moving natural. It shouldn't be nothing wrong with this. But of course, once you start lying, uh, once you start being deceptive, now that is a problem, right? You know. But right. at the end, of, but at the end of the day, end of the day, 
a woman has to go deep into the mind of that man and to figure out why is it an entire epidemic. It cannot be an entire epidemic like this. Uh, and it just be men just greedy. It, it cannot be. And if we just look at logic, logically, you can see there are great loads of women that know how, that are trained, uh, conditioned from a mental and emotional place to be monogamous. They know exactly how to do it. They can ride it out all the way for sure. decades. Yeah. <laughs> but but men, yeah. but men struggle. And yeah. I mean struggle. Really? And, and they struggle. And and that has to be that has to be because of the way we were raised. And I think nobody ever sits down and have that discussion with men. You know, they don't. Women just look at a behavior happening that they cannot relate to, that they actually themselves don't do. So they find the quickest way is, since you don't think like me, you don't move like me, and something that is easier for me, if it's harder for you, then something's wrong with you. And that's our problem. That's where the disconnect happens. And, and, and that's where the separation And society would definitely, like you said, um, put that on a man. You know, because Absolutely. we can only go by the behavior in which we, we witnessed over and over and over again, because I saw it with my dad. Um, I Absolutely. saw it with my brothers. I saw it with my friends. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. I, I, you know, so you just wonder, okay, look, like you said, women have a tendency because if you look at the women after marriage, how long they go, even without remarrying. My sister has gone years and years and I, you know, I, I tried all I could to get her to, to find, you know, a guy and she was, com you know, just comfortable. Like, I don't, I don't you know, I'm like, wow. You know, and, and a yeah. man is just the opposite. He's looking for a woman. She could, when, when he's divorced and, or his wife, you know, passes on, he, he's ready. He ready to go ahead and yeah. get that yeah. other woman. Exactly. Exactly. And, and, and it's bigger also, and I know we spoke about this before, so I'll, I'll make sure I reiterate. We, we have ancestors and, and at no, and at no right am I at liberty to disrespect our ancestors or, or even talk bad about them. So I'll speak from just what I've seen as a social norm. A social norm is we've seen our ancestors. That's great grandparents and grandparents. We've seen exactly how our how those fathers and those males how they also struggle with infidelity is 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 actually true and i'm pretty sure every single uh person can relate to an older male that actually struggled with infidelity and a lot of times it was our grandparents uh, they struggled with it and guess what grandma or great grandma was kind of forced to deal with it while, you know, granddad or great granddad kind of, kind of did his own thing, you know, took so care women, of the house. You know? Yeah. Women were in a different place back then, you know, absolutely. earlier on, absolutely. you know, they, there what there were not as many women as, as they are today being independent mm -hmm. and, and being, absolutely. you know, our breadwinners and, and, but uh, on the flip side of that, a man cannot cheat, cheat unless the woman allows. <laughs> you beat me to the so, punch. You know what I'm saying? So if, yeah, yeah. if, my, if my friend or my sister, or, or you know, that supposedly my yeah. friend, you my sister, we got yeah. told, and uh -huh. here you go, uh -huh. you're digging on my man. Uh -huh. You know, so that that's a problem too. You know, men may be yeah. hunters, uh -huh. But our women have been the one that that's they, yeah, that's, me. that's that, shortage. That's that's falling victim to the shortage. Yeah. Uh, that's a shortage issue. And of course, uh, you know, women are now dummying down their expectations. You know, some of them, some of them are standing steadfast to their true beliefs. Uh, but I think a lot of them, and I mean a lot of them, are falling to the flesh because they pretty much get tired of of being played or they get tired of the runaround or the games. You're about to lose your jacket here. 
Just need to bring it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. <laughs> All right. So, so yeah, I, I think it's just, I think it's really, it's just really the shortest thing, man. We're like, women are, women are, are now realizing that they are, there's one to, to 19 women, one man to probably 19 women, especially in the Atlanta metro area. Uh, and, and when we talk with those type of numbers, that is that is remotely hard for a woman to find uh, anything substantially of value. So they end up finding whatever they can find, which is uh, another guy who can only commit to something sexual or who can only commit to something uh, that's fictitious or or commit to something that's just a situationship. Uh, because, like you said, he he can pick he can pick and choose. And guess what? If she don't put out, he can always go and find five or six others that'll put out. And so now it makes it even harder for that woman. And I think that woman realizes that. So what she'll do is she'll say, you know what? If I can't beat them, <laughs> then join them. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think then I think that's just a battle of the shortage. That's just a shortage thing, you know. And unfortunately, uh, society has, has fell victim to it. Yeah. Period. Well. I uh, I I did a podcast a few weeks ago, and we talked about that. Uh, where I talked about I'm not going to be an option. I'll never be an option. Uh -huh. And when you look and you and you said to me, you was like, you are an option. Absolutely. And, and, and I understand exactly what you you're saying that you know I have been put in this category that you know, but. I don't have to fall victim to it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that was my meaning was that when I do find my king, um, I don't want my king to feel, you know, make me feel like, you know, I, I, I am an option. <laughs> you know, but now you're telling me that yeah. I don't care how many kings I get, I'm going to remain an option. I got a problem with that. Yeah, and, and you should. And you should, but you got to think. Uh, most women, especially after, and we'll go and I, and and I'll push the envelope a little bit. Most women right now that are that are older than forty, okay, they probably have tr they probably have traditional values. Uh, they probably believe in chivalry. Uh, they probably believe in uh, uh, you know their prince will find them and their prince will sweep them off their feet. They are hopeless romantics. Uh, they still believe in uh, opening up door their husbands or their whoever's courting them. They and of course they believe in the word courting. Uh, if someone opened up the door for them, if I want, if he wants me to come through the door first, give me give me his coat uh, when it's cold. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure that era is if it's not removed completely, but it is fading extremely fast. Um, and I think that now. Uh, when I say that you you are an option, it 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 really is because there are there are so many women that will go against the traditional values. Absolutely. So yeah. so even so <laughs> even when so even when a guy uh, is prepared to to be your king and he could be the king that you want, there's another woman somewhere. Lurking. And sometimes, yeah, sometimes, yeah. And like lurking. you said, it's the friend. It could be the yes, friend. Yes, it be, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's a lot. And, and, and the crazy part is there's absolutely nothing anybody can do about it because the numbers don't lie. You know, it's all in numbers. It's all in numbers. And men play the numbers game. Uh, it, we got it, married. Yeah, we get married because the best fit. You know? Yeah, and, and it's sad because you know you and I talked about how our our grandparents and the and the grandmothers they they tolerated and they settled because yes. they mm -hmm. they preferred to have him than to not have anybody because they they still had their children, so Absolutely. they 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 took a lot you know and so now oh, shit, uh, yes. you know women feel that they don't have to do that that you know I Absolutely. don't have to compromise. Yeah. Yeah myself my self dignity everything to do that that's why so many men and women still even though they are an option they still alone they still Absolutely. they still determined yeah. 
to be yep, alone absolutely. because I, I would prefer to be alone than a bit, like you said, be with somebody that's not going to be true to me, be some, with somebody that's not going to be faithful to me because mm -hmm. unless you and I decide that we're going to have an open relationship, you do what you want to do and I do what I want to do and we're just going to coexist and mm -hmm. we're both going to be happy and this is how we're going to live, then mm -hmm. that's, that, that's what you, you determine. But if you have mm -hmm. one that wants to be faithful and wants to be loyal and want to be, you know, all of the things that you think will come with the relationship, but you got this one over on the other side, you know, he's out there lurking. Like you said, he's home. Absolutely. Absolutely. And remember, uh, I was told before uh, a story about a grandfather who honestly had his mistress and and the wife, the, the grandmother knew about the mistress, would come over on weekends and they would hang out. And uh, it was almost like open cheating. Wow. But it, but like you said, women didn't have the power or they didn't have the financial support. Right. So they actually had to deal with uh, certain behavior. Yeah. And I think all of that stuff trickled down. So uh, even go back to Roman times. The king was the king to some degree was was somewhat trying to sleep with with uh with random servants. Mm -hmm. You know. Meanwhile, the queen was just being, you know, uh prissy and and queenish, if if that's a word. <laughs> you know, but and that <laughs> and that literally <laughs> it, <laughs> it, it, yeah, yeah, it literally becomes it literally becomes a norm. Yeah. So now certain behavior, certain expectations, they're all, they're literally all a reflection of, of social norms that have been created for decades. And now they have, they are rapidly out of control. There's nothing, there's nothing that we can do um, that I really honestly believe that we can stop it because it'll probably get worse before it gets better. Um, yeah, because they've taken God out of the factor, and so nobody's in alignment anymore. You know, like oh, you said, the old yeah. traditional way of of being honored, uh, honorable. You know, uh, sure. it, it's it's not it doesn't exist. A friend, my friend, yeah. we went to uh, a sports bar, and she wanted to celebrate my 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 newfound freedom, and all mm -hmm. of the guys aligned the uh, I mean just lined along the walls. All these beautiful yeah. women out sitting at the, yeah. at, I mean, at tables by themselves. And I'm like, what in the world are these men trying to talk to these women? They found, oh, more, they found more entertainment with each other. They they were yeah. laughing with each, each, each other. They were talking. I mean, they were, I mean, I'm like, this is crazy. My daughter said, well, Mom, this is not, this, the new way of dating do not expect that at all. Yeah, yeah. And that's that's social media too. Everything's faster now. Uh before we got to cell phones, and that's and that is our generation that's 40 old, 40 and over. Before we got to cell phones and, and the internet, uh, you were forced to sit down. When you met someone, you had to sit down and you had to lay your entire profile out in front of them. Right. So you had to do back and forth dialect. Mm -hmm. There's no more back and forth dialect anymore. Uh, I can hop on a site. I can put my face there. Uh, speak about my interests real quick in a few words. Uh, speak about what I like to do and what I don't like uh, in a paragraph or two. Slap that somewhere uh, yeah. and watch and watch them. <laughs> exactly and watch and watch people look at remotely what if I said those things face to face, it would really be a two minute conversation. So now we're telling ourselves in a two minute conversation, you're already interested in me. Oh, some of them and don't even bother to, to, to fill it, fill out anything. That, All they exactly do is put that, put that picture and probably their name and their age, and, and that's it. You know, when exactly. I see something like that, I'm like, oh, heck no. I, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. But, but now we have expectations to tell men to, to be very, very vocal. Or be uh, something that used to be, you know. Yeah, yeah you know, and and they don't communicate because nope. 
nobody really communicate. We everything, like you said, we're either texting or we're on the cell phone to the point where we don't talk to each other. You know, I you, go go out to dinner and watch exactly, TV. exactly, yeah. Both watch of them, them, both of them on the cell phone. They are not talking. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. And it used to be a time when we'd be on the phone and someone would say, "Hey, you sleepy?" No, I'm not sleepy. You sleepy? No, I'm not sleepy, but I'm, yep. uh, you know, I'm, I'm still and, talking. And falling asleep. Yeah, yeah you're still talking. Yeah. I ain't sleep. I, I'm not sleep, but I'm sleepy. You know, and it's like, you so don't want to hang up. You don't want to hang up. Yeah, now you yeah, don't want to yeah. talk. You don't want to exactly. talk. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. What are I, we talking I, about? I just want what I want. Give me what I want. Let's go do this yeah. and, and, and go yep. a separate way. On That's me. Yeah. Yeah. Life. So life now is just fast. Fast. And so, now, now we're forcing everybody to not think because everything needs to be fast. Dating needs to be fast. Um, courting used to, needs to be fast. So I'm not going to have any patience. Like, why am I patient? Because patience only creates wasted time. Wasted time only creates me losing opportunities. Right. And that's how men are thinking. They're not going to waste that kind of time because they know they don't have to. Absolutely. Now, if, yeah, now if women started creating these boundaries, creating these these norms, then of course men follow, you know, because we've always and, done and, things. And, and you're right. That's why I said if the, if, if our, our women stop sleeping with married men and they stop letting yes. these, knowing these men in relationships and if you stop that, that we, that we could contain some of it. If I know that, oh, yeah. that, that this is Sally's husband, I'm not going to sleep with Sally's husband. But it's a exactly. it's a matter of being being respectful and the men and vice versa. If you know that I'm your wife, why are you trying to talk to me? So that, that 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 that's the thing. We don't have any respect for each other and we don't care about each other. We don't care that we're ruining a family. It's not you just sleeping with me. You're now you 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 done broke up my whole family. So absolutely. absolutely. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 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 deeper than than any of us can be. You know, and I think the scary part is uh, we're afraid to address it. So we we name it. We'll shame each other. You know, we'll run from relationships. Uh, you know, we'll we'll date same sex. You know, we find alternate routes. Yeah. To cope then, with then to, deal to with cope it. with what. Yep, then we'll then the cope with what we're what we're really faced with. You know, and of course, black men of course are already targets. Uh, so it makes it a lot easier. It makes it a lot easier to blame to just blame the black man for for his actions. When when uh when we already know the lineage of where we came from and the lineage of what we was taught, we are victims of what we were taught. Yeah. We're not victims of being cruel and rude and disrespectful to women. Uh, not saying that some of us aren't, because a lot of us are. But when we talk about uh, uh, infidelity, the backbone of that is because we've been allowed and taught something that actually was remotely wrong. Can you imagine if we had if we had a bunch of uh, men right now teaching us how to be monogamous at age seven and eight? And nine and ten, and and all through your high school and teen years, um, it becomes a norm. If, imagine if someone was high fiving me and giving me celebrations and giving us praise for when we did the right thing in younger age, you know. But if that's not happening, and if our peers are continuing to 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 give us support for dating multiple women, it is going to be remotely hard to remove something with that type of impact it's going to be really hard you know it's just unfortunate for women. well you know, our, 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 our time is, is is running out because you know i like to keep my sessions uh you know small yeah. because i want to keep the attention but this is so good can i bring you back for one more yeah. all right so guys Absolutely. Absolutely. you all do not want to miss part two of this uh coach fernando all right Part two, Exception Talk with Dr. Clark in a moment.